This is Steve Fowkes welcoming you to part three. Here we will present a one-page map of the Alzheimer's process and the first domino in the Alzheimer's cascade. But before that, give me a minute to develop one point. Given the popular belief that a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease is tantamount to a death sentence, a death of the self if not of the body, the reversibility of Alzheimer's disease may be difficult to accept. Why isn't this front page news, you might ask? There are two answers to this question, one flattering and one not. First, the researchers at the University of Kentucky and the University of Calgary, who cracked the Alzheimer's code, were dentistry scientists, not Alzheimer's researchers. And so the breakthrough came through the back door. Furthermore, their research implied a fundamental criticism of two of the core assumptions of the U.S. dental profession, that mercury-containing dental fillings were basically safe, and that root canal procedures are basically safe. Second, the new understanding of Alzheimer's disease favored generic therapies, not high-profit drugs. It did not support the billions of dollars already invested by drug companies in finding a disease management solution to the Alzheimer's problem, but rather undermined it with non-prescription solutions that can be bought at your local health food store, supermarket, or neighborhood pharmacy. This diagram is a flow chart for Alzheimer's disease. It is provided for those of us who do better with pictures than with words. Please do not worry about not understanding it all on first glance, or even after a once through the presentation. It has all the core elements and systems in one chart, so it has to be complicated. But we will talk about each section of the diagram in turn, so that by the end of the presentation you should understand most of it. To help orient you, the diagram is color-coded, with the energy system in the center in yellow, like sunlight, to indicate power or energy. Feeding it from above is the circulatory system, in red, the color of blood, with glucose, oxygen, and fat-derived ketone fuels as the energy inputs delivered by blood. The energy system output is ATP, GTP, and NADH, where ATP and GTP are still in yellow, and NADH, as the most powerful reducing agent, is icy blue, which is a cold color to indicate antioxidant power. So the cold antioxidants protect against the hot free radicals that are an automatic consequence of the energy production process. The magenta to violet color tones indicate Alzheimer's associated phenomena, with the earlier stages being vivid magenta and the latter stages being more muted violet. Although most of the Alzheimer's elements are grouped on the right side, they flow from the extreme left of the diagram via a magenta dashed line, from where mercury, the brightest magenta, is in a dynamic balance with the antioxidant glutathione. Glutathione is the principal antioxidant of the cell and is responsible for detoxifying mercury. Both roles are fundamentally critical to health and especially critical to the function of the brain. And it is the loss of glutathione dominance over mercury that tips the balance and initiates Alzheimer's pathologies. All of the remaining slides deal with some aspect of the general role of the glutathione system and the specific consequences of glutathione failure to known aspects of Alzheimer's disease. We will start with energy systems in the center of the diagram and then branch out to peripheral elements of the diagram a bit later. Mitochondria are the aerobic power plants of the cell. The small inset area is magnified in the large illustration to show details of the membranes and intermembrane spaces. The mitochondria's job is to produce reducing power, NADH in blue, and energy, ATP, in red. Mitochondria are small bean-shaped cellular organelles 
with a double membrane, the inner membrane of which is convoluted or pleated like an accordion to maximize surface area. The key energy production structures are proteins floating in the inner membrane, labeled complex 1 through complex 5. These complexes form a chain, which is cold, blue, at one end, and hot, red, on the other end. The blue end, complex 1, accepts the fuel, or reducing agent, NADH, also in blue, and the red end, complex 4, accepts the oxygen, which is the oxidizing agent. The power transfer system is from complex 1, complex 3, and complex 4, which pump protons, or H+, across the inner membrane, and complex 5, which converts the accumulated proton pressure, called proton motive force, into ATP. The key take-home concept is that NADH plays two critical roles in the energy systems. First, the production of ATP is completely dependent on NADH, which pushes the power transfer system at the cold end of the chain to complement oxygen pulling the power transfer system at the hot end of the chain. Second, NADH is the source for reducing power to recycle antioxidants like glutathione and vitamin C. The significance of both of these concepts will be elaborated a bit later. But first, let's talk about the backup power system. Creatine kinase is a battery backup system for the cell. It is a sulfhydryl enzyme, meaning that it has an SH group at its active site, just like glutathione does. So it has the same affinity for mercury that glutathione does, but there's thousands of times more glutathione around to protect the creatine kinase from mercury inhibition. Creatine phosphate is the storage form for the backup energy. Creatine kinase converts ATP to creatine phosphate when ATP is plentiful, which is shown by the blue arrows. And it runs backwards to convert creatine phosphate back into ATP when ATP is scarce, as shown by the white arrows. This extends the cell's energy reserves from a couple of seconds to many seconds. Creatine kinase is known to be inhibited by mercury, and it is 95% inhibited in Alzheimer's disease. This catastrophic failure of the energy backup system contributes to memory impairment, cognitive dysfunction, and a serious loss of physical stamina. Deficiencies of ATP adversely affect the activity of enzymes. This has inhibiting effects on protein synthesis, neurotransmitter synthesis, steroid synthesis, maintenance of electrical potentials in neurons, and a whole host of other health-related processes. ATP shortages also decrease the availability of GTP, an ATP cousin that assembles and maintains the tubulin infrastructure of brain neurons that facilitates materiel transport down neural axons and dendrites. Now let's move up from the yellow energy systems to the red circulatory system. The heart and circulatory system are responsible for delivering oxygen, glucose, fats, and ketone fuels to the deep tissues of the body and for removing the waste products of energy metabolism. This system also includes the lungs, which must adequately absorb oxygen from the air and outgas carbon dioxide that results from energy metabolism. This is the end of part three. Please go on to part four.